legit set up from there the mic. Go. Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, you sound good. So, you don't even yeah. have to lean in. So it's all good. Good. I know. I, 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 I lean in to get dramatic, but you know. I'm so used to with the Yeti. Like having to having, be on top of it. <laughs> yeah, like having to make sure I don't lean too far away. Because when we do soiled restroom cinema, I could totally tell when I was leaning farther away. Right. Sometimes um, I do back up from my mic, like especially if I'm cackling. I want to mm-hmm. make sure that I'm not like overwhelming everyone because I know right. everybody has headphones on. <laughs> so, right. Like, let me just cackle right into your ear while you have your right. headphones on. That's weird. also, I've been thinking we do need, I, I think we do need some sort of intro music. Like, maybe it could even be playing Cam, softly in Cam the background. Has intro music. Do you have the intro music? Yes. Hun? Sorry, my friend. <laughs> Well, my social media acquaintance, yes. uh, the one with the Game of Thrones uh, and podcast and a bunch of other podcasts I told you about, Yeah, um, he has a strain podcast, and they basically talk about how much they hate the show and they just wish it would end. <laughs> they're, just, but, they're just there to bitch about it. It's a bitch fest about the strain. Yeah, but they're like, I mean, you could tell it's like painful for them to watch. Oh, that's um, terrible. Um, oh, but my friend, he was like, um, he messaged me, or... Sorry, Mike. I know we're. <laughs> uh, he's like, I'm not your friend, pal. I'm not your <laughs> pal, buddy. Uh, but uh, he messaged me like, no, with a link, and I was like, okay, what is this? And it said it was an article that said the strain will end after season four. Oh, and oh, but, but they're currently on season three. And I wrote back. I said, you're mad that there's actually going to be a season four, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, yeah. Oh, but man. I, oh my god i cannot recommend that podcast enough like they have so much fun doing it and they're very talented they're part of like the philly improv theater okay and you can they're i mean they're so talented with their impressions and their jokes and um like the satrakian they do aka walter frey um <laughs> it's oh my god just even if you don't watch the show, like, or you gave up after, like, half of season one, like I did. Right. It's it's so much fun to listen to. And, and he, you can tell they have fun doing it. Even though they hate watching the show, they love doing the podcast. Well, that's and good. It really comes across. And, yeah, I can't recommend it. I mean, I, did, I, I was out on the porch, like, uh, putting together some, like, new decorative thing that my mom got. And I was listening to it in my earbuds. And like, I'm sure the neighbors thought I was a crazy person just because I, I kept laughing so hard. <laughs> yeah, I think, you know, well, this is the thing I was just having basically a conversation with my husband about Google and Apple and why Microsoft is so far behind the game, basically in everything is like Google and Apple constantly like one up each other, like one does mm-hmm. something and then they do it like a little bit better and then a little bit better and they just keep doing this. And so they're making each other better. And then Microsoft is just sitting there like the kid who didn't have a date to the prom, but went anyway by themselves. Like, I'm just going to sit over here in the corner. And pal, yeah. they're, the, they're, they're like the angry nerd who's, but they're, it's actually, they're even lame for a nerd. You know, Google and Apple are well, doing a lot of I stuff. Get, I get annoyed even by the new Microsoft, like surface commercials because they're like, Oh, we did this movie on Microsoft surface. Do you, yeah. do you remember that? Yeah. Like the new one where the guy is singing about like, it's supposed to be like, you know, the something about Mary guys or something yeah. like sing about how we did this on Microsoft surface. I was like, stop being proud of yourselves. <laughs> okay. So you're, you're being proud of mediocrity. Yeah, I just for that's me, America right here's now. Here's the I deal, guess. and my favorite ad is the one that they advertise how the the Surface is so much better than the Mac Pro. I'm like, um, why aren't you comparing it to the iPad Pro, which PS is better than your Surface, right? Because that's really what it is. That's what they're. It's a tablet. It's not a PC. Exactly. And the iPad is a tablet, but it's pretty much like, a PC. Make make a make a touch sensitive PC. Yeah. Okay. I would actually be really interested in that. HP has, like, HP's done that for the last well, 10 years. Lenovo. You know. Google Google's having their event today. Their like, big, what event? Their big launch Pixar. event. Oh, okay. So they just, announced, they they just announced the new phones. It's called Google Pixel. And it's, uh, they made a big one and a small one. It looks a lot like the iPhone. Even the home button is, like, scary. But... They, this is their phone from the ground up. It's not 
a Samsung model. It's not a Motorola model. All the guts and everything, 100% Google and the case well, and everything. It looks pretty good. It looks pretty nice. Well, I, and of course, they I, had to make a joke how they still have the headphone jack. So I was like, oh, you guys are funny. Well, make a joke about how it doesn't explode. I just, it's yeah. su- supposedly well, open for pre order today, but I can't find it anywhere. So come on, Google. Did you Google it? Ha! I tried to. I tried to Google it. And all, instead, all you got were all these results saying how great Hillary Clinton is because Google is biased. Weird. All right, you got your notes with you? Yes, I do. You got your notes, girl? Yes. I'm going to work on not saying, like, you know, every other <laughs> sentence. I, and my mom, my mom goes, I didn't notice it. I was like, I did. <laughs> like, it's uh, like, play a drinking game with the podcast. Drink every time Killian says like, or, you know, <laughs> and don't drive and call 911 when you're done. Yeah. Please, please no drinking uh, while podcasting. Mm-hmm. It's not. Yeah, we idea. know. How, yeah, we know how that can go. <laughs> no, no kombucha today with the chia seeds. Good, because that's disgusting. Also, oh my god, half half of the bottle is still in my fridge, and it looks like something like it looks like a test tube. Like, uh, oh, it looks like something bottle. from the Upside Down. Yes. Yeah. Okay, get out of my brain. That's what I was gonna say. It looks like something from the Upside Down. <laughs> All right. Shimmy, shimmy, Hillary, shimmy. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. <laughs> All right. Welcome to Talk Amongst Ourselves with Nora and Killeen. I'm Nora. And I'm Killeen. And this is Talk Amongst Ourselves. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to talk today about the season 42 premiere of Saturday Night Live, which happened on Sunday. And the uh, anticipation leading up to this whole... It happened on Saturday night. On Saturday. Well, you know, it happens at midnight here. <laughs> it's technically no, Sunday. No, 1130, 11.30. I know, but it, more of the show is on Sunday than it is on Saturday. I'm just going to say. I've been I, having this okay. argument my whole life. But they don't call it, like, mo- mostly, like, Sunday no. morning live. They that's call what it they Saturday should call night. it. Most day, mostly Sunday at midnight live. Right. That's what it should be called. But anyway, Saturday Night Live premiered in Saturday night. And uh, starting with the cold open, which was so brilliant, which of course they oh you know, by the way advertised we, the hell out we of. should say uh, hosted by Margot Robbie and yes. musical guest The Weekend who weekend. got a haircut and I'm so excited. Yes. The week we'll we'll talk about the, we'll talk we'll talk. Um, but The Weekend yeah. I always feel like I have to say it The Weekend <laughs> because he doesn't have all the letters. Yeah, minus an e. <laughs> I know. I, I guess that's like he just started texting it that way lazily it, it, and then it just no, became and, that. No, and in this economy, you can't afford that extra eat. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, let's start with the cold open here. Alec Baldwin's Trump impression. I saw one article that really basically said it all. It was so scarily on point. It almost wasn't funny because it was so true to life. Right. And I, I, did I read fooled. the same one. I think it was Up Rocks that wrote that. Is it, was it Up Rocks? Yeah. I mean, I did get fooled, I'll be honest, by Denald Trump, D-E-N-A-L-D. <laughs> and I literally <laughs> thought that was his thing. And I even retweeted it I, and everything. He text, yeah, she texted, I texted me, it to you. And I, I was actually, I actually had a life that Saturday night. So I was out and had not gotten to watch it yet. Um, and uh, drinking spicy margaritas. Uh, but which just reminded me of like taco flavored kisses, J Lo. Uh, make it spicy. <laughs> and um, I you texted that to me, and I was I like, know. I got and, called and, out so hard on Twitter, like this is a parody account, and I was like, yeah, but you know he was thinking that. Like, but I I will say I like stared at it for a good like three minutes going. Is this photo? Because at first my thing was it's photoshopped, right? Right. Um, and then I was like, no, it doesn't look photoshopped. But then I was like, and I even asked my friend who had to put on her glasses to look at it. Um, <laughs> she goes, oh wow. She goes, he really said that. And I was like, it looks like it. I said because I knew like Alec Baldwin in particular doing Trump was going to piss him off. Oh and get, man. 
I, I mean, Alec Baldwin is a very like prominent figure and equally controversial figure in New York. Oh, sure, but sure. Arguably, he's still more respected. Um, and especially when people were actually saying he should run for office, like, oh, yeah. you know, the, the comparisons, I feel like that really probably got under her skin, but I, yeah, I had to stare at it and like <laughs> analyze it like it's a Pruder film. Um, before I was like, I was like, oh, Danelle, Danelle. Yeah. <laughs> but I, Fair. that guy, I, I think whoever's running that Twitter account is so on the mark in oh, terms absolutely. of like just honing in on Trump's mindset mm-hmm. that it just, it's scary to me. It just like the Alec Ball. I mean, the whole thing, the whole cold open was so brilliant. My favorite. Okay. Well, there's like 20 favorite parts, but in the beginning when he's like, after one question, he answers, I won. It's over. Thank you. And he just starts walking off and they're like, uh, we have 88 more minutes, sir. Like, Oh, uh, but before we get to Trump, okay. When Hillary came out, Oh, Kate yeah. McKinnon, sorry. Uh, when she came out limping with the cane, and then I mean, the no, I know, I know. Before the somersault, when she came limping out with that cane, uh-huh. just the way she was walking, and just she she nailed it because yeah. I, I I immediately gasped and go, she's gonna do Willy Wonka, she's gonna do the Willy Wonka bit, <laughs> just because like of the way she carried herself. Yeah, I feel like I feel like Gene Wilder would be very proud. Of course, I yeah. mean Kate McKinnon is so brilliant. And she's so good as Hillary. And I think this, in particular, this version of Hillary that she's doing right now is so spot on because she's not just like a fangirling Hillary. She's mm-hmm. taking serious shots at Hillary also, which I appreciated in the cold open. It wasn't just skewed to like Hillary is the shit and she's like butter and we're going to just throw everything to Hillary because we made a big mistake in having Donald Trump host. They just did Trump as Trump and... And it's so terrible that that you don't even have to go overboard to make him no, look they, terrible. They quoted some I know. of his stuff, like actually, like has this ever happened? Besides, like a catchphrase where they've actually quoted exactly what Trump said. Yeah. Um, and I feel like I mean, Trump they, writes the material himself. They don't even have the writers are just recording his speeches. Well, <laughs> he should have written his own material when he hosted. Um, uh, yeah, SNL, you're still not off the hook. Okay. Okay. We're still, we're still mad. But I mean, when he says, when he's trying, when Alec is leaning in and he's just going after uh, Hillary just so hard. And then he says, and when she talks, her mouth her looks mouth like a looks tiny like little a butt, butthole. Butt. And then he's doing that pose. It's like the best. Because it's, you of know course, what? his he face. Looked, he looked like that New Yorker cartoon on the cover. Yeah. The Miss Congeniality <laughs> guy is Google Donald Trump New Yorker cartoon if you haven't seen it. It's brilliant. Yeah, it's please. Donald. It's Donald Trump in a bathing suit. Yeah, it's um, so good. And and he, and whoever did his makeup. Oh, they had the spray God. tan like perfection. The orange spray tan with the white eyes, like raccoon white eye part. And well, the, and uh, they knew how to play up the certain features that yeah. Baldwin had that looked more like Trump. Yeah. And the hair, the the wigs were on point. Right. On the other hand, I a second in my cheeks because I'm getting pissed. Um, (laughs) What the... Okay, I'm going to say what the fuck was up with Michael Che's makeup. Oh, Lester Holt makeup. They were trying to make his nose look pointier like Lester Holt's. It was too extreme. It looked like he had on like a Lester Holt, a bad Lester Holt mask. Yeah, they like, should they should have literally it, just left his nose alone. They made his skin look gray, which I thought was a little offensive. Like they had to tone down Michael Che's coloring because he's darker than Lester. Oh, so a light skin blackface. Yeah, kind of. And it was um, you know I I agree the the prosthetic nose on him was terrible. It didn't look good. I mean they could have just gone chin, with a wig, the, chin, the brows, yeah. everything. I mean too many prosthetics. Yeah, like when Eddie Murphy played a white guy, uh, back. In yeah. the day when he did that social, which brilliant sketch, look it up. Yeah. Amazing. It was like the precursor to almost everything uh, Dave Chappelle did. Yeah. Um, not to take away from Dave Chappelle. Anyway, <laughs> trying to be nice. Uh, <laughs> but he uh, he looked like Lester Holt by way of the Burger King king. <laughs> 
Yeah, that was, it was not, I agree. The makeup on him was not, I thought he had some really good lines and I thought he played the character really well. I think he did a good Lester Holt. His his cadence and everything, I was very impressed. But the thing is, I felt like the makeup took away from it. And Lauren was breaking one of his own cardinal rules, um, which I saw in an A&E documentary. uh, God, I sound like an asshole. Um, (laughs) Years ago, about like a week in the life of SNL. Right. And the rule is you never put makeup on to the point where you can't recognize the performer. And I feel like they broke that rule. Right. It's still less offensive than John Ranitsky's uh, Anderson Cooper impression from last year. Yeah. Nothing. Which, yeah. That's, you know, at least Michael Che, I'll give Michael Che, he had the mannerisms and the demeanor I, down 100% on Lester. The voice was great. Yeah, he was great. The voice and cadence was great. Well, I, I thought I, the I thought, sketch thought overall was good. Him. No, no, yeah. Oh, perfect. And... Um, if you watch it, you almost have to go back and rewatch it because they do the split screen thing and they're both doing such extraordinary things yeah. and their comedic timing. When the other person's it, talking. Yes. The com- the chemistry and the comedic chemistry is so brilliant. You have to go back and rewatch it because you like they're both equally enjoyable to focus on. Oh, yeah. I mean, when Alex yelling out while she's talking, liar, false. <laughs> wrong i was just like that's you warmer. know that, yeah. warmer <laughs> warmer <laughs> but and i love but i also i did love how <laughs> she goes alicia mcconnell she goes oh thank you what yeah what unless there's like oh, what about her oh thank you for bringing that oh, thank you bringing it out <laughs> yeah because she did kind of shoehorn that in oh, there oh that was so that was but it was great that they just called it out that's what i'm saying they didn't this wasn't a hillary love fest or a Trump hate fest. It was like, here's what really happened. It was, it was, it was how, equal. It, it, they played it how it went. Yeah, it was equal. Like slightly, and I, I appreciated yeah. that. I appreciated that. But the, and I, I, I was telling people, uh, I don't. I, I told somebody after it aired. I said, I don't feel like they've been this good in a political sketch, especially a political cold open. Yeah. Since 2008, and then I read, interestingly enough. This was the highest rated season premiere since 2008. I believe it. I believe it because they were so, the writers, dear writers, I love you. Please keep it up. Please keep this rhythm going for the whole season this year because it was so good. I mean, my mom watched with me and her comment at the end of the show was like, that was one of the funniest SNLs I've seen in a long time. And she laughed at all of the skits. It was like, you know, sometimes you watch and there's like one skit that hits and then the rest you're like, uh, okay. Uh, and, yeah. and by the way, it's uh, Sarah Schneider and Chris Kelly, new head writers, kudos to you. The energy and cohesiveness of the yeah. cast is something I have not felt in years. I'm, I'm okay. excited. I'm, I'm getting yes. excited. I'm getting yes. beclamped for this year. Beclamped. Talk oh. amongst yourselves. I'll give you a topic. A Bluetooth is neither blue nor a tooth. Discuss. <laughs> All right, let's get to the opening monologue. I'm just going to say this. I love Margot Robbie. She can do whatever. I did not care for the couture she was wearing. I wasn't sure what it was was trying to be. It It looked like a doily that wasn't fully completed, that she sort of put a pasty bra on underneath. Because this is a beautiful woman. She is unbelievably beautiful. And then I thought, this is terrible. This is a terrible dress. It's not making her look good. But then I thought her monologue, the little gimmick they were doing on the fact checking, was cute, mm-hmm. but it went on too long. Right. It, it well, and also, and also, like again, not to be like, okay, you know, what are you wearing? Uh, yes, women are bigger than that. But when something is so distractingly bad, yeah, no, it, it was, was terrible. Like, it was like a combination of Gwyneth Paltrow's dress, that goth. Uh-huh. Gwyneth Paltrow dressed in the Oscars yeah. and something you would get at a stall at Coachella. Yeah. No, it was, it, the thing about it was, I just, I don't know who picked that out for her, but they should be fired because that's terrible. <laughs> and that's who terrible. designed it? And the pot, okay. Those it's were awful. pot leaves. Those were pot leaves. Yeah. I just, and I, and I, and I, and I, and I kept staring at him going, like, sure, fine, wear pot leaves if you want to, but it just seemed a weird, like, were you trying to make a statement? If so, just like wear like some sort of tie dye dress with the, like, are you trying to say like, you know, 
haute couture like strain strains of weed i don't know i don't know um, it just it, it didn't work for me because she's so beautiful and then i felt like she was wearing trash and it just and it, made it just made me upset because this is her first time hosting and for someone like her who's like skyrocketing right now this is mm-hmm. a make or break point and i i know that some people could have seen that and just been because the opening monologue was a little like eh. But it was, you know, it was cute. It just I felt like it started off good and then it went really flat and then the end it picked up the monologue. But it was That's like a comedy, though. Yeah, but it was like too much. Do you know what I mean? Like the joke went on too long. You push it. It's funny. You push it. You keep pushing it. It stops being funny. And then you you just keep going and eventually it becomes funny again. Yeah, that normally works, but not for this particular no. concept. Apparently. OK, guys, uh, by the way, it was. um Basically, they played on the whole fact checking thing and she would say something to the camera and then turn. It would say fact check and she would actually tell the truth. Yeah. Um, And she did this with various cast members. I did love A.D. Bryant's shout out to Jake. That was great. To Drake. 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 (laughs) I don't know why I said Jake. I'm sober. I promise. It's like one o'clock in the afternoon. Um, But uh no, I thought yeah, that was cute. I, I thought Leslie Jones bit was cute because that was like a yeah. true factoid. So that's really, you know, that was uh, and then, Yeah. And thanks for reminding us all how young Ro- Margot Robbie is. Appreciate I know. That. When she said her birth date, my mom was like, she was not born in 1990. So, of course, Actually, I had to look it up and she was. No, she she said her actual birthday. There was a controversy about that. Like, they had to, like, dig up old yearbook photos of her because yeah. people started insisting she was lying about her age. Like, they did a whole, like, well, similar to what happened to Rebel Wilson when she kept saying she was a certain age. Then her classmates were like, ah, 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 we know you. Like, here's the school book photo of you. Like, yeah. Because she didn't, I mean, obviously, Rebel Wilson is older than people thought. People thought she was, like, 28, and she's actually, like, 36. She's my age. Yeah. She's, well, okay, she's older than me. She's okay. a little bit older than you. But, like, it, she was, t- I mean, she was doing the Hollywood thing and saying, I'm 27, you know, and when she was in her 30s. And I don't care. Personally, here's the deal. I don't care. But Margot Robbie's uh, actual birthday, which she said on the air, it's is real, on her yeah. IMDb. What? And I couldn't believe it. I was like, no, this but girl they, was he, born when I was a freshman in high school. Like, that's disturbing. Well, uh, she's going to keep, I mean, here's the deal. She's got good genetics. She's going to keep yeah. looking good for a long, long time. So she's got a gigantic career ahead of her, which I'm stoked on because I think she's a brilliant actress. You know, um, I just thought the monologue for me it could have like they could have trimmed a good minute out of that. And I would have been happy and it would have worked a little yeah. bit better. Yeah. Okay. Um, so then the next sketch, the first sketch, actually, uh, the sinkhole sketch. Nine was, action news. Yeah. I was laughing so hard. I had to like pause and rewind because Keenan was so on for Dead this pan, sketch. He yeah. was so good. And and um oh crap, what's his face? Who was, you know, her husband? Matt Chat. By the way, Matt Chat. Mikey Day. <laughs> Mikey <laughs> Day. Shatt. Okay, guys, this is a new <laughs> cast member, Mikey Day, and he exploded onto the screen by just standing there and just playing the yeah quiet nerd like he didn't try too hard he didn't try to have like a really stupid voice or voice. something no yeah no and i okay restraint is in- incredibly important when it comes to comedy and knowing this guy you can tell he's got a sensibility of how to play it yeah and whether to go big or just like quietly and that's how he was on my uh mikey day actually was on uh, Maya and Marty this summer. I was one of five people. Love, watch. I watched it. I watched it. Okay, so we're, we watched we're, it. Two, we're two of the five. It was um, so good, and he was so brilliant was. on Maya and Marty. So brilliant. And I, know, and I noticed him, and I was like, this guy should be on SNL. He's he's really good. I was so happy he, they hired he, him. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, he, add, he added to the chemistry. He wasn't just a background or supporting player. He, but he knew his place. He knew when to bring it out there and when to pull it back. Yeah. And I was really impressed by that. Yeah. He wasn't just your average white dude. I know. And the, and the thing with this one is, is the joke stretched the whole thing, but they kept adding to it. I mean, every single thing they kept like, this is your wife. Then we have that whole bit. Then it was like, 
oh, well, you must be multimillionaire, Matt. No, no, I'm not a millionaire. You're not a millionaire. And then then he's got the Crocs on, which was like so oh, great. He's wearing Crocs no, with socks. So- Crocs with socks. And here's the thing. Um, well, I mean, I just have wait. to say Keenan's line. Keenan's line was so brilliant. He says, he's married to the Lord's mistress and he's wearing Crocs <laughs> with socks. Like, <laughs> no, and then, um, okay, guys, the I thought the theory was going to be, uh, you see it as soon as they walk on screen, Margot Robbie plays this gorgeous woman married to what looks to be like your below average nerd. Basically C&C and, nerd factory. Yeah, but and, and Mikey D is a good looking man, so, you know, he wasn't going to be that, bad, you know, but he just looked, the way he carried himself, you could tell. Yeah. It's like the equivalent from um, Anne from uh, Arrested Development. Okay, that's a good comparison. Yeah, yeah like her, him. <laughs> uh, and they, and I was like, okay, this is obvious. But the way they pl- everybody played the joke off of each other made it stand out. And it could be like one of those timeless classic sketches. Also, Leslie Jones... <laughs> <laughs> make it again sports okay, caster okay yeah. okay i got two theories <laughs> and then uh, yeah and, and cecily and, strong and, trying to like keep it like an actual news report for like basically the whole thing until the very end i thought it was great she's like uh yeah. that's not we're talking about a sinkhole that swallowed mm-hmm. 72 cars you know like right but then you know at the end keenan's just like neil mcnab reporting live from a world that no longer makes sense like <laughs> just yeah. like I mean, they they pushed this to the limit. They took it all the way to the line. They pushed it over the line. It was still funny. And I thought this was just, it was great. It was a great first sketch. I thought, okay, this is going to be really good. And then the next thing was a digital short. And I thought it was oh. like in the Villains Academy or something. Because that's what I saw on the, it didn't have a title, this digital short. But I thought. Uh, the li- the librarian. No, it was called, yeah, it was. It was called The Librarian. Okay, The Librarian. So, yeah, no, it did. It did flash at one point on screen. Right. Okay. 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 I'm, I'm just okay. saying. I blinked. Um. Anyway, <laughs> I thought it was gross. Like, obviously, it they went way over the top with like Margot Robbie, like just turning into like you know Gollum. Okay. Yeah. So it's it's this typical sexy librarian schoolboy crush on the sexy librarian. And I was like, really, is every sketch just going to be about her being hot? And But then I told myself, no, they've been able to do interesting twists here. Yeah. Just wait. And, but I like how it almost went like demented horror movie. Oh, yeah. It was like, it was like some of the movies we've watched <laughs> that are so terrible. It just it went reminded so me, wrong. It reminded me of the Dead Poets Society sketch they did at the season finale last mm-hmm. year. With Fred Armisen. And I'm not even going to spoil the twist for that one, but that's pretty, like, it's awesomely horrific. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's really unexpected. I I mean, I saw where it was going once she, like, ran her fingers through her hair and it started coming out. Yeah. I did not expect them to push it as far as they did. And they get and, that Twix, you know, oh, yeah. They get that voice but, going. Well, but then the twist at the end is she's still got a great rack. So even though she's basically a demon from hell. Yeah. All right. Oh, their, yeah. their heads explode. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I thought that was good. And then they did, of course, Family Feud, which, again, Keenan on fire. Point. On See, fire. I think he's been on the cast for something like 14 years. Yeah. He's a, he's he, been on in the cast since W's. Uh, yeah, W's first I think term? yeah his first term yeah 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 so Keenan Thompson has been in he is he's outlasting the senior, him he's the senior player right now oh I, I, he might go for the, like the longest cast member of all time Kenan and you know what I'm forever. not mad I'm uh, not no, mad please keep Keenan because his <laughs> his well I grew, I grew up with him yeah well did you because you watched what all that and Keenan and Kel right. poor Kel Mitchell he's still talking about somewhere talking about orange soda I know. That's sad. But I mean his Steve Harvey is so on point and the mm-hmm. teeth the teeth they put in it. I know he's like, I was I'm Oil. sorry I'm late, I was getting my teeth enlarged. <laughs> <laughs> well, his teeth had to be in, in, in proportion with his mustache. I know. The mustache, just the whole thing. I mean, he's he has Steve Harvey so down. Hmm. It was great. And I love that they did He does 
He does Steve Harvey better than Steve Harvey I know. at this and, point. And then Kate McKinnon comes in with the Trump campaign manager with the impression Kelly that is Conway. so on point. She nails this woman. It, it, it's not just like her mannerisms or her uh, cadence. It's like the her face, entire, her facial expression. No, well, no, Kelly and Conway's entire campaign strategy. Yeah. She managed to work that into the impression. I'm not going to answer your question. I'm just going to talk about what I want to talk about. And then I'm just going to say something totally something random really and false about crazy Hillary Clinton. Hillary Clinton. <laughs> Uh, and I loved Margot, yeah, Rob- Margot Robbie's Ivanka Trump was so great with the wind machine on her. <laughs> I love fun. I schedule 20 minutes of fun a day. <laughs> and then when the My- creepy brothers come up like. Oh. <laughs> and again, these are the new, these are the new, uh, two new guys, Alex yeah. Moffat and Mikey Day. And again, from their performance on the premiere episode, Fantastic. This is not the, this is not the typical frustrating year of the bland new white guys. Yeah. These guys are really seem like they're going to add something to the cast. I think it um, they, yeah. The way they found an opportunity to recreate that creepy ass Trump children photo, poor Tiffany, where is she? And where's Baron and what's up with him? Well, I uh, I know we're going to get comments. Your show is too political. Well, you know well, what? That's what the we're new- talking about on SNL today. I mean, yeah, and, and, then, and you Oh, go ahead. Well, then you shouldn't have helped a reality star rise to power. Thank you. Thank you. And then, of course, on the other side of the aisle, it's the, you know, the Clinton supporters. And now I know you have a thing on the new girl here that you're going to. Melissa Villasenor. Yes. Uh, I thought her Sarah Silverman was good. It was. I thought she had the voice down. She had like the little. I thought it was good. But I feel like the. The voice was down, but then if you got the voice and mannerisms down, I feel like the jokes, though, that she made to be like, I'm like, remind you that she's playing Sarah Silverman were cheap. Well, personally, and I would say this to Sarah Silverman's face, I think most of her jokes are cheap. So I, for me, well, it I was know, a spot but... on impression because it was cheap jokes. So. Well, I liked how I liked her at the. Uh, you know what? I've been kind of on the fence about her for a long time. Sarah Silverman. Uh, yeah. yeah, and uh, I really, but I feel like she sh- she's shown a different side to her. Yeah, I mean, um, I liked her when she was supporting DMC. Bernie and everything that she was saying and, at those but, rallies. And, and but stuff. and then she was like, "But you know what? Stop being ridiculous, okay? We're gonna like go off a cliff." Yeah, like I thought. I thought what she said, like how she kind of, I thought her entire speech at the convention at and, the DNC, how she, yeah. and how she reacted to the protests was great. And well, because she's the thing about it is, is that a lot of her comedy is about her not really being an adult, even though she's mm-hmm. my age. And I thought that that showed a lot of class from her at the DNC that she was like, okay, everyone it's time to, this is serious. Now we're not fucking around. Like we all have to be on the yeah. same page here because we want humanity to keep surviving. And I appreciated I that from her because I think her appeal a lot of times is to an immature audience of like, you know, people who don't want it, like who have Peter Pan type syndrome, who yeah. just don't want to exactly. grow up. Oh yeah, exactly. A woman child. Exactly. Well, we talk about man child, but she's a woman. Exactly. Child. And so I liked, I, I thought, okay, this is a new chapter in the Silverman comedic era where maybe she's going to get um, more, you know, less childlike, I guess. She's going to grow up a little bit as a comedian. And I thought, this is good because some of her stuff is so funny because she just nails it. And then it just fizzles for me if I watch like a whole hour for a comedy special or something because there'll be like good 10 jokes that I'm like, oh my God, that's hilarious. Like I'm right. laugh crying. And then the rest, I'm just sort of like, uh, I don't really want to know about your vagina. Like, well, ex- yeah, exactly. And I feel like maybe if they had let Melissa do more in the premiere episode, yeah. I might not be so critical of this. Um, but it felt... I'm I sorry, thought she felt- did a good job, and I, I hope that the whole Twitter very controversy mad. for her goes away and sort of fades out and people can just get over it Well, and I hope she gives us something else to focus on. Yeah. I would like to see, obviously, more performance from her, but I'll say she got more time than Sh- Sashir did. And she's a brand that new cast was member. We'll, I was get, like, we'll get that. We'll okay, get to that. Okay, so the next yeah, sketch that was messed up. Well, after Family we, Feet. We, oh, oh, and what do we, we also miss? need to talk about uh, Larry David came back as Bernie Sanders. Great. I Yeah. But he's too cranky, he's, though. 
He was too great. He, he, he's flat out just doing it, playing himself. He's just doing point. Larry David. He wasn't even yeah. doing Bernie that time. It was just. I, I was just like, ugh. Like, oh, but I will say Beck Bennett's Vladimir Putin was. So good. Amazing. When he takes amazing. his shirt off, I was like, yes. <laughs> yes. That was perfect. But that anyways, was good. yes. Uh, and and, and how- Cecily Strong's Min Wen. <laughs> <laughs> Lin Manuel Miranda, you know they're okay, guys. By the way, Lin Manuel is actually hosting oh. next week. Um, you know they're going to address that in some way, and I feel like it was on par with um, Nassim Pedrad's uh, uh, Aziz Ansari. Yes, that was yes. so good. But let me just say, yes. I thought Cecily's was so funny because it was, and then and then Keenan's like, was there a beat I didn't hear? Like. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> like, like she's just freestyling and I thought this is it's so good because it was like an homage you know what I mean mm-hmm. to Lynn because he's so prolific with you know and he's bringing back I guess his improv rap show which is like basically yeah, how he yeah. got start off Broadway so it's, he's bringing that like, back yeah it's yeah it's like if uh Nick Cannon's Wild and Out wasn't uh insufferable was good yeah yeah okay so the next the next thing of course is the weekend update which I thought Colin and and Michael brung it. I thought they did a good job. I think they were having a little bit of a tiff on air, though. Like, in all honesty, I felt like there was a little bit of actual tension between the two of them. Yeah. And, and I, there's been a, a critically uh, this uh, particular iteration of Weekend Update has been panned big time. They've been going after them. There have been think pieces Mm -hmm, saying mm -hmm. how they're not right for this era of what we need in Weekend Update. Well, sometimes we don't get what we need. We make the best with what we have. Right. Um, But uh, I think chemistry-wise, like, I do like their dynamic now. And I feel like this is we're seeing we've got a window. They finally let their guard down enough where we get a window into their actual dynamic. What I heard, because I'm a, you know, deep diving wormhole into SNL (laughs) and the backstage (laughs) dynamics. um, What people were so confused about who knew them and who had knowledge of what goes on behind the scenes said at uh, during the first cup, like first year and year and a half, their on-screen dynamic was completely like the opposite of what their dynamic was behind the scenes. That's actually the entire reason they right. were together is because they had such a strong like back and forth and dynamic and they really are good friends off screen. Yeah. And I could see that in this episode, like you could see them playing off each other more and sort of paying more attention to what the other guy's saying instead of like before, it'd just be like, Colin would say something and then they would switch to Michael and they were not reacting to each other's comments right. in any way. So I see the the dynamic there. Um, I thought it was good. I thought like, I mean, their opening joke about the, the Samsung iPhone comparison was brilliant. Oh, was brilliant. It was I loved so it. No, good. Nobody pointed that out. It did kind of fall apart towards the end. I think um, it's a frustration of wanting to get your point across, but not really knowing how to, um, well, you know, put it out there in a way that's going to be received well, and I feel like that was kind of that kind of fell apart. Yeah, but I feel like I feel like the back and forth is better. I like how more than any other duo, um, they seem to react to each other's jokes. Yeah. I like that element of it. It's good, and I mean, uh, they had some good zingers that like a. Uh, it's a rebuilding series season for America. Like the, mm-hmm. like the, we're the American Yankees, like which is a rebuilding season because, oh they've, because they've lost their charismatic biracial leader. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I thought that was like on point. That was so good. And then yes, of course, absolutely. Cecily strong with her Kathy Ann character. I was laughing so hard because I have encountered this particular Sorry. person at strange places you know what I mean? Like you just when somebody is that fucked up and just drunk and whatever they're on and talking like, you know what I mean? And like I thought this I would love to see Kathy Ann and Drunk Uncle like talking to each other about politics because I well, think that Kath- would be hilarious. Kathy Ann actually uh I don't know if you remember, she was actually originally a sketch character. Mm-hmm. And I think it was a brilliant move to transition her to Weekend Update. Yeah. Because 
I always found that character really entertaining. I know some people probably don't agree, but I always found that character so entertaining. But it se- it seemed like the premise they would try to write for the sketches would almost get in the way of that character right. because the premise of all the sketches in that they wrote around her were weak at best. Oh yeah. No, this and is, so, as a weekend update character, it's much better because then she can just rant and then you get like mm-hmm. the full taste of her and that her effectiveness as a character is much better in the same way. I wouldn't want to see a drunk uncle sketch. I'd yeah. much rather have him playing off of, you know, weekend update anchors than that but i mean and then keenan again with his big poppy was so uh, on point he was it is on point big but i'm kind of like over it all right and then um the hunch bunch sketch right after that which is scooby yeah this scooby-doo 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 um this was great the impressions in this were great i thought 80 did a great velma who's of course my favorite uh scooby-doo character and, and Kyle Mooney did a great oh, Shaggy like he was, I was so great. good as Shaggy. I know people are kind of like people. I I guess are kind of on the fence about like or into you know they're not really loving Kyle Mooney. I think Kyle oh, Mooney is so funny. underrated. We love so you, Kyle. underrated. You have our vote. He needs. They need like, to give him more stuff. He's funny. Bruce, I, I, I'm sorry. I need more Bruce Chandling. Yes. Yes. He he needs he needs more of a chance because he is funny and they're just not they're not throwing him in there enough and he does he holds he holds the characters well you know what I mean well, like he's not breaking and he's not even when he plays, even when he plays himself uh guys yeah. <laughs> uh, check out look up uh Kyle versus Kanye SNL where he I says everybody thinks I'm a comedian but I'm actually like this rapper and. <laughs> You know, I, I finally got my chance. I'm going to battle Kanye West. And it's this digital short all about him battling Kanye West back it. when uh, Kanye was a musical guest. Oh, brilliant. But to hear Margot Robbie call Kyle Mooney a pussy yeah. on live TV was just brilliant. And it's and it showed how into it and how well Margot Robbie can handle that comedy and that material and how she knows like the tone of the character she's supposed to play. Yeah. I thought, I thought her, her character was on point. I wish they would have pushed it more with her character. Oh, I felt like they started pushing it. Then they pulled back then they sort of pushed it again, but not really like they should have just gone full, like way over the top. I mean, they did. I mean, towards the end, it was just like, now I just was like, Oh, I, I didn't totally get it when she was just like, and so the monster made a mask of his own face. So face. You know? <laughs> well, and I, I can't believe I'm saying this about uh, an SNL sketch, but I almost thought it was too short. Yeah. It could have, it could have gone a little bit longer. But like, what was the last time we said that? Never. And I, <laughs> so it's, so, I mean, I was like, God, that was too short. But I was like, I just thought it was too short. Yeah, I'm so I I'm so excited for the season because I actually wanted a sketch to be yeah. longer. Yeah. Now the the next sketch to me had one standout performance, which of course is Kate McKinnon uh, <laughs> of the women's no, no, wait, women's wait, wait, round wait, wait. table. You the for, 26th, we for, no, oh, we what forgot. did we forget? What did we forget? Uh, Melania moments. Oh, I forgot. But I didn't even write it down. Oh, I did actually. I I thought that uh, was lame. I thought it was it, totally lame. I didn't because, well, I just had a conversation with my friend about like, oh, deep thoughts. I love deep thoughts. Whatever yeah. happened to them? Why don't they bring them back? I think the This is first, the new deep thoughts by Jack Andy. If you look at it, maybe that's why I saw it differently. Okay. Because I just had a conversation with somebody about deep thoughts. I see. Um, if you look at it from that perspective, and yes, this particular one was kind of weak. If you look at it as a starting point for something new that's going to recur, mm-hmm. this could get really good. Okay. I'll, 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 I'd it, have to look at it. If they do it again, I'll look at it in that light in a Jack Handy sort of like, okay, this is like meant to be deep thoughts. But I just thought, I mean, I thought one of the jokes was funny. Like, 
where are those people and where are they going? Is there a Fifth Avenue? Is there a Sixth you know, like, Avenue? <laughs> yeah, I thought that was funny. You know, well, and it is kind of depressing because you wonder if it's how true that is. I don't um, know. Like, she does she ever leave her gold clad apartment? Other than to like, stand on stage next to Donald, I mean, her gold, pla- yeah, her gold plated tower. Uh, it's, um, it's ridiculous. He's a man of but, the people, though. Don't forget, he's one of us. All right, the next we won't get into Trump because we that's a that's a different podcast. I can't. I can't. Okay. The next one, of course, is the 2016 Film Festival New York Film Festival Women's Roundtable. Kate McKinnon was so. <laughs> Okay, basically, she was guys, so good. This is another excuse for Kate McKinnon to play a weird character yeah. that cracks the rest of the cast up. I'm okay with that. <laughs> it doesn't. It's not old yet, so keep going, keep going. I forget okay? what her character's name was, but she was some old, you know, like not. I, I don't think it was a real person. Uh, everyone no, else not. was playing real people, except for Kate McKinnon was playing like some super old in her 90s MGM star from way back when and of course yeah, everything I'm, she, I'm looking it's it's to bet i think it's to bet something to bet yeah something but she basically was like i should have this in my notes i love sorry, i love guys, her whole thing so women writing you'd have to teach them to read they first. had to read first i mean they tried to teach me to read once it didn't work <laughs> <laughs> you know and talking about how all these you know all these things the sexist tropes and stuff how it was totally true and it's funny because it is true. Like everything that came Absolutely. out of that character's mouth actually happened to women back in the day. Um, and it's and the, still and the happening, contracts. Sure, some, oh, oh yeah. the uppers, the uppers and downers. Yeah. Comment. Where they would inject like, her with the opiates and then. <laughs> it, it, it was, it, it was like tragic, but like there was some tragedy behind, like it in the Amy truth Bright behind was that. trying so hard not to die. Like she's just, it, she was sitting too close to Kate, I think. Well, and I love how they actually made the rest of the characters, uh, you know, actual film actresses. Yeah. I thought uh, Sashir, by the way, Sashir Zameda, uh, yo, SNL, why aren't you using her more? I know. Why she, is she a throwaway she, Lupita Nyong'o for two seconds? You do not you do not disrespect a fellow Hoosier, an indie native like that. No, I love, um, I love, love how Kate McKinnon's character kept calling her Little Peter. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Little, little, little Peter. Peter let me tell you something. <laughs> and I, it went, and her she best line though was, "Why? I wonder if she gets that from Leslie because Leslie said, oh, by the way, uh, throwback to the uh, monologue when um, Leslie said she what, she called Kate McKinnon Kate, Kate Middleton. Middleton for a year. <laughs> that's that's true. real. That's true. <laughs> I no, I read that in an interview years ago. That's actually she true. actually said that on Ellen." when they were interviewed yeah. on Ellen for Ghostbusters. And she was yeah. like, yeah, I really thought her name was Kate Middleton. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then Ellen was like, why didn't you say anything? Kate was like, eh, you know, like. Oh, actually, I, um, true story. One of, uh, you know, my dad was principal and one of the teachers uh, who worked for him, he was a fourth grade teacher. I, um, my best friend, her uh, mother was a secretary, mm. and um, we helped him in his classroom, like, over the summer, get ready. He kept calling me by my older stepsister's name. Oh. And I never corrected him. <laughs> <laughs> you were just like, eh. Like, no, it ha- no, this went on for a good year. Oh, that's a long time. No, at least a year. That's but too long like, to let it go, I, I think. Like, I can't. And, and the thing is, he was, like, super friendly and talked to me a lot and really liked me. But he just called me by my older stepsister's name. And <laughs> it's like, hey, Melanie. Hey, thanks, Melanie. Hey, Melanie, how you doing? And I, and, and, and <laughs> my friend would just look at me and, like, it, it, it was like being in a Kate McKinnon sketch where you're trying not to lose it. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah and, and it's it's no little peter no but, but that was great yeah. just she oh, all the stuff coming out of her mouth was so funny my mom was dying during this I, yeah and you know what margot robbie like seeing her lose it it just endears you more to her i know it was so i mean and kate just stays in character mm-hmm. she just is just there she's this old she lady was starting to lose it at some points 
a little bit, but it was, oh man, it was so good. And then the last uh, thing they did, of course, was the Mr. Robot short. Mr. Robot. And okay, This guys. was fantastic. Loved it. I wondered if, like, how and even if they would address what happened to Leslie Jones yeah. this summer. By the way, internet, I love you, but at the same time, fuck you for yeah. what you did to Leslie. No, that's um, un- unacceptable. God, I mean, she she is joy personified. And, and she's dealing with this. I'm, I'm just going to say this to Leslie Jones. A hundred million percent class on, on her part, on dealing with the basically having nude pictures leaked online of yourself and the fact that she she took a breath from Twitter, she took a breath from the internet and just collected herself and then just came back and was like, okay, here's it's me, boom, and just moved forward from it. And this sketch was just sort of the exclamation point in her right. whole like journey through this thing, which I thought was brilliant that they can that she's at the point now where she can make fun of herself on it. And so it's, you know, like, I mean, because at the end, he's like, well, you actually, here's the person who leaked your stuff. And she's like, oh, that's me. What? And then he's like, yeah, you backed up your photos to your website, which is kind of really hard. I don't even know how you did that. Like, you know, so <laughs> yeah. like, I mean, it's it almost is. impossible. Like, I, you know? I had to have, yeah, uh, I'm not going to say what I do to back up my photos because stay out. Um, <laughs> not that there's anything bad. Good luck Just, finding a nude photo of me because it doesn't yeah, exist. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So. Not that there's anything I, and here's the deal. This is thing, my this is my head. personal thing. I don't p- ever take a picture of something that I wouldn't. I would be ashamed if a random person or my grandparents saw it. You know what I mean? Like, I I have nothing on women who are proud of their bodies and they. I'm just, no, I'm just talking that. about a bad. I'm just talking about a bad selfie. Bad I don't selfie. Want to see, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you don't I want to see your bad. Oh, are you, like my my all my desperate. Horrible attempts at selfies. I don't want anybody your seeing that. Your selfie them. game is pretty strong. Don't oh, don't uh, don't shout out, to, shout out to Snapchat filter. <laughs> okay, and then let's just talk about the weekend for a brief moment. I thought he had a good performance. I loved the weekend update that they did, where he just like looked at the camera. He's like, "I got a haircut," and then that was yep. it. the weekend weekend yep. update. And I thought and that I was know, brilliant. I, I watched him, and I was like. Oh, damn it. Am I like a weekend fan now? He gets oh, under your skin. My fine. mom was not a fan, so I had to move forward through that. But I listened to a bit of it. I thought he sounded good. He's, I feel like he's, he's a good live performer. He brings it mm-hmm. every time. I, you know, I think he's good. I, I, I enjoy I, his music. I, uh, well, I felt like his first album sounded kind of contrived on some sounds, not sure. all of them. But, uh, like, he seems to be gravitating more toward uh, this, like, rather than I can't feel my face, more stuff like The Hills, which right. I thought was, I thought was genu- genuinely, like, original and interesting. Um, it seems like he's actually starting to find his own sound rather than um, basing it Just off being of, pop. like, or, like, ba- like, uh, the biggest uh, comparison is early era Michael Jackson. Sure. Or sure. Um, or even like uh, Bruno Mars or something. But it seems like he's really starting to figure himself out and go his own way. Uh, and he worked with Daft Punk, which that made me have. If if I hear something is being produced by Daft Punk, I'm. I, I'm, it's automatically on my list to listen to. 100%. Right, right. Yeah. I mean, I had homework. Uh, I, I I bought homework when I was in eighth grade. Wow. So, yeah, I know I was that kid. I was that weird <laughs> kid. Um, but I thought he did a good job. I wasn't sure about uh, the second performance. Um, I love the song, but it seemed like some of it might have been lip synced, or oh. like a, no, or a head no. Okay, I won't say lip synced. I think he's there singing was a, over his own uh, his own track, a essentially. Vocal track, and yeah. that might not have been his fault. They may have, you know, he turned didn't it have up. an Ashley Simpson moment though, because that was bad. Uh, acid reflux is blowing. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Horatio man. stands. Oh, where have you gone? I, I know. Seen. He's he needs to come back in some. I follow him on Twitter. He's still funny. So. We still I love heard you. he no, I heard he is the nicest guy. I know people oh, yeah. know him. I said he's like the nicest guy. 
Well, and how screwed up is it that you get your health in order and your career prospects dry up? You know, sometimes people only want you to be the funny fat person. Yeah. And so you get in shape and then... But he's well, funny. That's, but you know, the, funny is Can funny. I say the person who overcame that was Chris Pratt? Because he was the funny fat yeah. guy on Parks uh, and Rec. He, he, and then he, he, was, he was fat. He was the funny... No, he was the flabby. He was still fat, though. He was uh, fat. Compared to... I'm he sorry, wasn't compared, obese. He was fat. Compared to Kevin, Kevin James and... Kevin James is obese. There's a difference. Everybody thinks that fat just I means, know, but I but I know. know, but I mean like in terms of like wanting to ke- generalize over generalizing. Yes. But see, Kevin James got in shape for that one film where he, you know, was the teacher, but then he did the mixed martial arts thing and he was in good shape in that film. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden he had to, you know, get fat again so he could get more work. And I I feel terrible about that because that's stupid and it's not healthy. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's that's this is my only thing. It's just honestly for me, I'm a I'm bigger than I should be right now. So I'm the last person to say, "Oh, you're fat because I'm fat. I'm already fat." But I'm working on it because I'm 5'5 five five, and somebody who's 5'5 five five should not weigh 200 pounds because that's just not healthy for my internal organs or my bones and things mm-hmm. like that. So I'm working on Well, I yeah, I just weight. feel like more like myself when and I'm in the process of getting back to myself. Yeah. Uh this just turned into body talk. No, I know. I'm, no just, saying, I'm just saying in general. No, I, I'm joking. looks good I'm now. Joking. He's feeling good. And I'm happy yeah. for him. And I would like to see someone hire him because he's funny. Right. Or at least hire him to write for your show or whatever because he is right. funny. He has good humor, you know. Um, yeah. Okay, that's our little flashback moment there with the SNL cast. Horatio Sands, we love you. Just well, send and a shout out. Been- well, they've been uh, rerunning a lot of uh, SNL, like, election era reruns yes. on, could I say rerun again? Um, <laughs> on Comedy Central. So I've been binge watching, like, to clear those out of my DVR. And uh, Horatio came back to guest as Bill Richardson. And yeah. it was, a, I saw, I watched it yesterday. It was just like, God, Horatio's just, he's so joyful. Like, Low key, but joyful, and I feel like a lot of that got overshadowed by, um, Adam Sandler. No, Jimmy Fallon. Eh, a little bit, a little bit. I I know I, you're not as big a Fallon fan as I am. I no, I no, you you. I used to be a Fallon stan, like huge. And and what happened, Trump? Are you still upset no, about the Trump? No, thing? no, it. I, yeah, I am, but it started before that because okay. I feel like he left a lot of people like Horatio behind. Um, yeah, I mean, he just sort of but, went and did his own thing, but I think, I mean, I like him on The Tonight Show. I like what he's doing with The Tonight Show. I like the bits that he's doing. I like the uh, whole, this, you know, the EO skit bit. and stuff. Yeah, yeah, I do too. Well, I feel like some of, for a long time, especially when... Um, in about the year and a half before he went to this night show, some of the writing on there, and that's actually largely due to A.D. Miles, the head writer, mm-hmm. um, Ginger Love, uh, but a largely it was due to uh, the writing, but it was better than what was on SNL at the time. Yeah. A lot of the sketches and digital shorts I thought were better. Um, Game of Desks. I like the whole uh, thing he did with Justin Timberlake oh, like yeah. at the camp. Mm. yeah that was cute uh <laughs> <laughs> see you can't totally hate justin timberlake because i know you like the stuff he does uh i like you know what i don't love all of the stuff he does on us no i really don't um you know you you and my bet my childhood bestie like carrie love you um would get along so well because you guys are both JT. We're both. Stan. I'm a huge JT fan. I'm going to admit it. I, yeah, I've liked him both, since the Mickey Mouse you Club. Guys, no, you guys are both so. JT stands. I, I, the Real Housewives of Late Night, for one, is what, yes. for one. I, I really wish they had continued with that because yeah. that's amazing. But and, uh, yeah, Game of Desks and Six B, the Glee, mm-hmm. like. I dial it back on the games and get back. Like, I wish they would do some of those digital short type things again. Yeah, that could be good. I mean, some of the games, it depends on who's doing the game. Like when uh, Katie Holmes did the, uh, you know, the musical chair drinking game. She oh, kicked she everybody's was, um, ass. She was great. She was great. And then, of course, I mean, lip sync battle is so good. 
It is. And it's so good. I mean, Emma, you know, Emma Stone, she was like, oh, she just oh, owned it. Way, way, yeah. way, way, I mean, way. you've had so many iconic performances just from that little bit. I think. Oh, was, Joseph really Gordon good. Levitt doing uh, Super Bass? Yeah. Yeah. Holy shit. He was so good. I just think that one is really good. I oh, keep wait. The- sorry. Will Ferrell doing Drunken Love. Yes. I, if you haven't seen that, and Google also that. When, Google that right now. Or when Will Ferrell did his uh, land uh, skating to the Downton Abbey theme. Yes. And the tight pants. Tight pants is great. Tight no, pants. T- no. Let us play with your look. <laughs> yes. But, that, but again, we're talking about stuff that was late night with Jimmy Fallon, not yeah. the Tonight Show. Yeah, that's true. I mean, here's the thing. I I think Fallon tried to go off and do movies like some other guys who left SNL and it crashed and burned for him movie wise. Oh, and they then, acknowledged it yeah, on SNL. But he brought it back with uh, first he hosted the Emmys and I thought he was a great host. And I was like, please bring him back. They never have asked him back, but he was so good. Um, and then he got the hosting gig uh, first for late night and then the tonight show. And I think it really suits his personality. No, he hosted, he, he hosted the Emmys after late, after he got was late it after, night. Okay. So it was after because, that. Because he was so he good had, though. He, no, he had a bit uh, guys. I'm sorry. This is how deep my nerd goes. Um, he had a bit during the Emmys where he came out to present and he had an auto tuned, uh, mic. Right. Where he was like, everybody's ready to party. <laughs> and then he slipped and fell. And he was still going, ow, ow. Yeah. <laughs> auto In the auto it was great. Yes. I, yes. I think and that, I, I love him so much. I, I really love what he does. I love his attitude about hosting. To me, he's like the late night Ellen, where everything is very enthusiastic and it's about loving the people that he's talking to and things like that. And I appreciate that. I'm still, and I think he's caught enough flack already for the Trump situation. I think that was completely inappropriate for anyone to have that particular person on and try and make them lovable is just, that's, you know, I think that was just a bad taste. Humanize somebody who, like, because we know that that the people who love Trump are, like, doing it for, no, they're doing it, like, for emotional reasons. Like, not anything rational. Okay, never mind. We're getting off on Trump. Okay, so let's talk about next week's Saturday Night Live real quick for the end here. Yes, uh, Lynn Manuel, Miranda, and Twenty One Pilots. Yes, this is going I'm to be excited. so good. I want to see. I I want to see, and I'm just throwing this out there, SNL. I want to see Cecily Strong do Lynn Manuel to oh, Lynn Manuel in oh, the same yeah. light, in the same light that Eddie Murphy did Stevie Wonder to Stevie, Stevie Wonder. Wonder when Stevie Wonder was oh, playing gosh. the piano. He's like, he, he's like, guys. what are you doing? What are you doing? Stop, stop, stop. That's that's well, not he, Stevie yeah. Wonder. Like well, Eddie's, he, t- <laughs> you know, like. <laughs> That was one of the best sketches of all time when Eddie Murphy is doing Stevie Wonder to Stevie Wonder. Also, we talked about this before um, in our planning and just talking. Uh, I believe, I firmly believe that we are going to see an appearance from The Rock, specifically in terms of The Rock Obama. Yes. Because he's actually done that more often when he hasn't been the host. Right. Right. And he and Lynn and The Rock are doing um, promotional stuff for Moana together. If you haven't seen it, it's absolute magic. And you can tell they genuinely enjoy each other's company. Because The Rock will call people out, not by name, oh, yeah. but will say if he's not having a good time, yeah. he'll say something. Yeah. And he, they both genuinely seem to enjoy each other's company. And so well, that would I, be smart if he came out, you know, during the monologue or something as the rock or even if they do a rock Obama sketch, but he could, I think no, know. it'll be, it'll be in the cold open. I hope so. My I opinion. hope so. Um, but does that mean we're going to see Armisen back as Obama? Oh, because he played Obama, uh, for all the, the rock Obamas. I know. And, but then we had Jay doing Obama for the last, I know, bit. but in terms of the, did we ever have a, I need to look that up. Did we ever have a the Rock Obama where Jay was Obama? I don't know. I don't. I do. I, I do don't not have that it. nerd uh, information right now. <laughs> <laughs> I can. I'll, I'll get it. Yep. The presence of Hamil- Hamilton was so heavily felt at the Tonys, and with what James Corden did, uh, 
I don't know what they'll do with the monologue. I don't, uh, know. I don't know. I mean, we got Lynn Manuel, and then of course the week after that, Emily Blunt. Yes. coming up, which is going to be great. I'm excited for that. I'm excited. I'm I'm very excited this year. I just only thing I'm asking is the writers, please, please, please keep up this rhythm. Please, you keep are. Going. You guys are on fire right now. You're on seriously, fire. Seriously, this is the best energy we felt from SNL in a long time. Yeah, absolutely. So. Keep it up. We are excited. Also, okay, uh, SNL aside, anything you've uh, seen or observed in TV this week? I Well, I did DVR uh, Westworld, and I have not watched it yet. I know you watched it. We will discuss. Um, I need to watch it. I'm, I'm highly, uh, you know, anticipating this. I just watched the season premiere of one of my favorite shows that does not get talked about a lot, Madam Secretary. And I heard it was super good. Oh man, this I let me just say really the good. writing on this show is so good, and Taya Leone is so good. So good, she's so good. It's just, oh, I love this show so much because from the first, this is now the third season of the show. But from the first season, you see clearly the parallels in this woman's career and Hillary as Secretary of State, and then they Absolutely. sort of take it, they take it in another direction. And they keep working in this this character sensibility. And what I love about this character is it sort of crescendoed in the season premiere. She's getting interviewed by, of all people, Jane Pauley. And, oh, by the yeah, my, I was going to bring that up. My girl Jane, who oh, I actually met a few months ago. Oh, I love Jane Pauley. So yes. Jane Pauley's interviewing her character, the Secretary of State, and says... Who's sure? Yeah, <laughs> who says... Sorry. You know, she asks her... Are, are you, you know, she starts talking about climate change and she says, are you breaking with your party? And she says, well, actually, I've never been affiliated with any political party. And, um, you know, I just am who I am and I'm trying to do what's best for everyone. And of course, this causes a huge uproar because the president's Republican and she's been appointed under a Republican mm-hmm. president. But I thought this is so brilliant, which sums up the entire character is here's this woman who was in the CIA. Her former boss is now the president um, mm-hmm. and gets asked by her her former boss come be the secretary of state because i need you um and she just does it because she's like doing a favor for somebody and she ends up being the absolute best person that they could have possibly ever gotten for the job because of the way she can take any situation and work it until the outcome is positive well, that's, that's kind of I like think, uh, the writing is so brilliant on this show. You know, I love the cast. It's just I love everything about this show. So I I had to well, watch you know it what? last night. <laughs> that's actually uh, kind of why uh, LBJ is underrated. Oh yeah, he was shoved into that situation, oh, yeah. and I know we have Vietnam and everything, but in terms of civil rights and education, uh, he he was the same. Like he just like kept working a situation and yeah. until he could try to make a positive. <laughs> I did find out when I met Jane Pauley that the only, for a long time, the only way she could get her husband, uh, Gary Trudeau, Dewsbury, uh, like the main motivation for her to come back with her to visit like the in-laws uh, was Steak and Shake. There you go. So Dewsbury I had my first Steak and Shake in Missouri. So it's good stuff. But I love that they feature Jane Pauley on there. And oh. it's interesting. And I they had Madeline was... Albright on before. I mean, that was awesome. Yeah. That whole oh, thing yeah. with her and Madeline my Albright mom, talking to each other. My mom's like, my mom's an Adam, Madeline Albright stan. I mean, I am too, but she's like. Oh, oh no, I love stan. Madeline Albright. I could talk all day about her. But I think the way they do the show is so real. It's, it's, it's like you're, you have to think to yourself, is this what's really happening at the White House right now? Like, it's that realistic. Oh, so absolutely. Situations I, that are I, happening. I watched the early seasons. Yeah. Um, I will say, uh, as far as Westworld goes, guys, please at least give the first episode a try. It's not great, but it's a very good. And it's a good, given, it's a good launching pad for the rest of the show. Yes, and it's impossible in considering how complicated and layered the plot is. Mm-hmm. And there's there's no real source material you can get spoilers from. Um, it's based on a um, movie written by Michael Crichton in the 70s called Westworld, starring right. Yul Brenner. But if you look at the premise and compare it to the pilot, you can tell they're taking just... They're taking the a- essence of that and they're expanding it. 
Well, there's actually a theory that this show might work into the timeline of the original. Oh, okay. Well, we'll yeah. have to see. Um, but it's so layered that you're not going to get everything you want from the pilot episode. Right. But And J.J. Abrams is a producer. And you can definitely see that hand in it. Especially, It reminds, there are moments, especially toward the end, that remind me of the best of Lost. Mm, okay. And that there is like some, there's like some quiet, sudden quiet, like uh, malevolence to some of the characters. And it, you're invested in, y- you end the episode invested in what's going to happen. Even if the episode itself didn't make a huge impression, you're still invested in what's going to happen next. Oh. Well, I'm, listen, I'm pumped about it. I've been pumped about it for months since I saw the mm-hmm. first trailer months ago. I just haven't had an opportunity to watch it yet because it was Monday night and there was Dancing with the Stars. So I had to kind of tune into that. I know I'm lame. I'm lame. No, no, no. I know. It's okay. No, <laughs> Lori Hernandez is amazing, but yeah. She is. Gotta watch, gotta watch Ryan Lochte. Ugh, don't get me yeah. started. All right, we're not yeah. even going to go. We're not even going to go into that. We're not even <laughs> going to do it. We're not going to Lochte this up. All right. So that's it for today's episode we'll be back next week with our recap of episode two hosted by lin-manuel miranda of snl uh musical guest 21 violets yep it's gonna be awesome sauce yeah. so okay uh thank you for sticking with us uh we're having a lot of fun doing this i hope you're having a lot of fun listening and we will see you uh next week bye bye, bye.